Welcome to Telemetry Overlay. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to work with 360 degree video, specifically with Insta360 cameras. First of all, we need to record the telemetry data. There are three main ways to achieve this with the Insta360 cameras. First, we can use the GPS remote. Just turn it on when you turn on the camera, wait for it to pair with the camera, and wait for a GPS signal, which is displayed as intensity bars. Usually, the longer you wait, the better the signal. It's also important to mount the remote in a place where it has access to the sky. Then, you can start recording. Second, you can use the Insta360 app on your phone. Turn on the GPS setting, press record, and don't lock your phone during the recording, which is not always convenient, so 3. Use the dedicated app for Apple Watch or Garmin watches. Again, wait for a signal, and then record. For other camera brands, you will have to look into their specific tutorials or manuals, or you can always record GPS data with your phone or GPS tracker and save it as a GPX file or other supported formats. The first workflow we're going to see is for reframed videos. That means videos you shot in 360, but want to edit as flat ones. So after the recording, when you plug your camera or your SD card to the computer, you will see two files, one for each lens. And for this workflow, we will use Insta360 Studio and telemetry overlay. So let's launch the first one. And we just have to drag and drop one of the files so it starts doing its magic. Then we're going to go to free capture to decide what our reframed video shows. We can choose the framing, the zoom, set key points and modify their properties. But there are specific tutorials from Insta360 on how to do these things. You can get creative here, just make sure you don't trim the beginning of the video which would make syncing the video and the telemetry harder later on. In this case, I will lock the direction so it's always pointing at the pilot. And once it looks good, we can export it. Let's save it as reframed. And we could enable additional options like color plus or remove grain. But let's keep it simple for this example. I will fast forward during the export process. And now let's launch telemetry overlay. The key concept here is that we will first import the video and then import the telemetry data. So let's look for the video file, which is the reframed one. Let the software optimize the video. If you skip this because you're in a hurry, it's fine. Just know that playback may not be super smooth if you do, and the H.265 video will not play at all. And it will now look for telemetry and fail to find it. That's normal, the reframed video does not contain telemetry. We will need to get the telemetry from the original file, specifically the first one, the one with two zeros. And now after it's processed, the software will create some sample gauges for us. This is how they look in movement. And if you're happy with that, you can directly go to the export section and export your finished project ready to share. However, let me show you how to tweak things a bit. For example, this accelerometer gauge might not be ideal for some 360 videos, as you never know how the camera is oriented. So we can select it, click on delete, and we'll replace it with a different one. So let's go to add gauge, advanced, and choose the acceleration GPS gauge. And this just shows us acceleration along the travel path. And as you can see, you can scale and move things around quite easily. We can also change colors of every element. So let's tweak the bearing direction gauge and give it some surreal colors just for fun. This doesn't have to look great, it's just an example. And now let's see something cool. If you select the GPS path gauge, you can go to the shape tab and add map backgrounds to it. Let's make it larger for visibility. And try a different option like the satellite photo or a dark background so the path stands out, but satellite looks quite nice. So let's put it back to the corner. Okay, and finally, let's see a different version of the speedometer gauge. So we can go to the gauge tab and just choose the alternative option and play with the settings a bit. That's fine. And as you can see, the color of the gauge changes with different speeds. 
So if you're happy with that, again, go to export and export your finished project. The second workflow we're going to see is for 360 projects, that is, videos that you want to export as 360. Be aware that this is a substantially more complicated process and it requires additional software. It will help if you have previous 360 video editing experience. So back in Insta360 Studio, we will switch to the View tab, which will give us the 360 video back. So without further ado, unless you want to tweak some of the settings, you can export the video. And the native resolution is recommended. So let's name this 360 and export it. This will take a while, so I've skipped it for you. And back in telemetry overlay, let's start a blank project from scratch. Here, again, we will first choose the processed video. Let it optimize. Again, the software will fail at finding telemetry, that's normal. But we can retrieve it from the original file. Again, it created default gauges for us, but I'm going to customize things. I'm using the delete key to delete gauges. And I'm going to settings and adding a reference grid so I can reposition things better. Something interesting for the bearing gauge, we can go to shape and make it static, which means the arrow will always point forwards and it's the numbers that will spin around it. With the GPS map, we can do as before, reposition it and give it a background. And since the speedometer is on the side, we can go to shape, give it a 90 degree angles. You can use the arrow keys for precision. And use the alternative gauge like before. This is of course just an example of the customizations you could do. Take a look at the advanced tutorial if you want to go further. I am now adding some minimal gauges, which means they just have an icon and the value. So this is the GPS acceleration one, which we can express as G-force as well. Here's the altitude, which can also be computed as altitude from the lowest point in the path, instead of from sea level or absolute. Let's add the slope angle gauge as well. and the clock. We can do away with the milliseconds. I will place all this to the side, although this is not the final composition, as you will see next. We can show some additional stats, like the maximum or average slope. And once we're happy with the result, I'll remove the grid for clarity. We can go to the export section, but this time, instead of a finished video, we want to export as a transparent video. By default, it will use the ProRes codec, which is great, but files will be huge. So make sure you've got enough space in your drive. And let's export it. This will take a long while, so let me skip it for you. Our transparent file is ready. And now you will have to use some third-party video editor, one that supports 360 workflows. I'm going to be using Adobe Premiere, but there are other options out there like Final Cut Pro and some more. Once in our project, the two files we want to import are the processed 360 video and the transparent video overlay. Now we will create a timeline based on the 360 footage. And we can place the transparent video on top. This is not proper 360 yet, so let's go to Effects, look for VR Plane to Sphere, and drop it on the transparent overlay. This is now geometrically correct, so in order to check that we will toggle the VR video display. If you can't find the button, you can use the button editor to add it. This is how it looks in 360. And if you are happy with this composition, you can just export your project, but I think it's worth repositioning elements. So we will remove the VR plane to sphere effect for now. Go back to the standard view, and use an opacity mask in the effect controls to work with each element independently. For example, we can select the GPS path only. 
I'm enabling the margins for reference. I'm repositioning to the center and then nesting each layer. Let's call it map. And I'm doing this so the transformations I've made so far do not break with the additional effects. Now we can apply the VR plane to sphere effect again, which allows us to rescale the element. And if we open the rotate projection options, we can reposition it while respecting the 360 geometry. I'll place this one on the sky, and this is how it looks in 360. We can adjust things further. And let's add a second element. So let's look for the transparent overlay again. Place it on top and repeat the process. Apply an opacity mask. Now to the speedometer. Position it at the center. Nest the layer and give it a name so you don't get confused. Add VR plane to sphere effect. Rescale and reposition with the rotate projection options. And this will be repeated for every element. Once you have a bunch of them, your performance might start to go down. So feel free to turn off some of the layers to make things easier for your computer. I'll speed up the rest of the process, you know how to do it. OK, this is how the composition looks. And this is how the 360 user will see it. We can make some final tweaks, increase the size of some elements. But that's pretty much it. And now I'll go to File and export my timeline. You may have your preferred presets here, just make sure that the video is selected as VR. I'll spare you the rendering, and this is how it could look on a VR headset. As you can see, there are many gauges we have not looked into, so make sure to check out the other tutorials. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.